All right. Um, hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Ha hello, we're Massive Monster. Um, and today we're gonna we're gonna talk about something special, something close to our hearts. We're gonna talk about how to start a cult. So our favorite topic. Um, we'll be looking at Cult of Lamb specifically. Um, my favorite game. Um, out of the, all the games I've played. And yeah, we're just going to go through it today. So maybe uh, if we want to go around the um, the table, around the panel, and introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Julian Wilton. I'm the creative director. Um, I draw a bunch of stuff. I do a bunch of other stuff. I don't know what I do. But now I'm hosting a, po uh, a panel. So here we go. All right, who's next? <laughs> uh, I'm Jay Armstrong, and um, I'm a programmer, also game designer. Um, and uh, yeah, worked on this game. Um, it's all right. It's pretty good. Pretty good game. Um, oh, it, not your yeah. favorite. Not, no, well, you know, it's you know, it's up there. Um, You're out of the company. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jay. I am James. I'm the art director on Cult of the Lamb. Um, did some drawing, did some animating, fun stuff. All the animals. Did the That's animals. Who? James, Jim, Charles, yeah. isn't it Charles? Actually, that's, that's his real name is Charles. Yeah, his is, real name Charles. How about start with that? Charles the Pear Man. <laughs> and then Jay's name and Jay, he's Jonathan. It's all oh, a lie. Come on, it's We're all, all. Oh my god! A few minutes in, <laughs> Everyone's already, <laughs> everyone's getting at getting at each other. Oh we're god. going off the oh, we're yeah. going off the rails. Oh, yeah. sorry. Let's stay on topic. <laughs> uh, I'm Will. I'm one of the programmers. It's, yeah, it's a pretty good game. It's all right. Yeah, and uh, I'm Harrison, respect. also one of the programmers. Um, yeah, did some of the Twitch stuff, uh, mostly the gameplay side of things, and uh, yeah, lots yep, of stuff. He's it. our he's our dream man. Does it all. Make with the um, <laughs> but yeah, today, so you know, we know what you're interested in. You want to start a cult. So where do people start? What what how, what's the best place to start? Jay, how, what do you reckon? I think you need to start with um, uh, a charismatic leader, right? That's the number one thing. Is you um, got it? You got it. Tick, tick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so, so. I mean, part of the reasons we're talking about how to start cult is like this was one of the things that we we looked at when um, designing Cult of the Lamb. Um, and uh, one of the things at the top is you got to have a charismatic leader. Um, and so that was one of the things we tried to do with our our main character, which. Um, I think Julian and James, you guys designed the the lamb, right? And was that something in your when you were sitting down to design this character? What was what was going through your head? Yeah, I think um, you can yeah. definitely give uh, give Julian credit for the lamb. Really, I mean, we bounced we bounced oh. a lot of ideas. Um, you know, we went through a lot of different itera iterations. Um, it, it was a rabbit at one point, and then it was kind of a little ah, monstery so demon guy. Um, but I think. Uh, yeah, when we, we landed on the cult idea and Julian really pushed the idea of this lamb because the kind of religious connotations and um, kind of yeah. tied to the Bible, which and it worked, worked really well. Yeah, because he's, you know, he's, he's, he's innocent, the innocent lamb, he's the sacrificial lamb, he's been put up for it. And then on the other side, you've got like this goat that's kind of, you know, he's the evil dude. Um, so, you know, it's a charismatic leader. You have to be the charismatic leader. That's how you start a cult because you can't have a... You can't have a cult without leader. That's just a religion, you know? You don't want that. You don't want that. That's, yeah, lame. Um, so, yeah, we drew the little Lammy. Um, what else? Uh, what can we talk about Lammy? I feel like I need to see a picture of him. Um, just careful when you Google cult of lamb, lamb. Um, you know, it can get a, bit, get a bit spicy out there. I mean, unless uh, that's your thing, so. Yeah, hey, you, you know. know, yeah, go for it. No judgment. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I, I think when we were designing him, it was kind of a... It's a bit where we're kind of designing by subtraction because, like, yeah, I kind of drew these original ideas um, that kind of Jim saw, and I think we just kind of whittled it down to what are the basics of the design. So I think we ended up with kind of he's got a crown, he's got a bell on him, and he's got his little tunic. So if you've got those three things, then you've got the the lamb from cult to lamb. And it kind of made it easier as well for people to, like, draw it. And, yeah, and he's kind of got this cute but evil side because he's got the crown on, he's got this unknowingness to him yeah, yeah so i think we, we wanted um we wanted this kind of idea of the the occult and this dark energy to sort of be running through the game so you know we have the the idea of the 
the cults coming from real life and like the sort of 70s Charles Manson and all that kind of thing but we also wanted this kind of spirituality and dark occultism um to be present as well so I think that's that's where the crown come from and um we also really like the idea of having kind of the the main character being more than one character so in uh, one of our yeah. previous games Adventure Pals you kind of had the little boy and then the back hit the giraffe that lived in his backpack that kind of a uh, banjo kazooie vibe and uh, i think we knew we yeah. did something similar um so for for a long time uh the kind of the, your weapons sort of followed the main character around in the game but then um we kind of moved on to this this idea of the, the cult leader uh so we cut yeah around as this kind of yeah. shaping thing which kind of is a separate character and has its own little personality that kind of is almost um controlling yeah. the land um, but we got that, that back in, eh? Yeah, yeah we managed the, to the weapon follows you. Yeah. yeah. So you were the, are you the crown or are you the lamb? Oh, Ooh, that's, that's, the question. that's a good question, that's, that's Harrison. A great that question. Is a, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for the. And question. we're going to move past that anyway. <laughs> when, when we started wow. the game, you actually you actually began the game as the crown, and you were like floating around, and there was like a four legged uh, lamb, and you would go up, and then you'd put your you know land on him, and then he'd sort of convert and turn into the lamb that we know mm. and love and stuff so originally you did play as the crown um but i think i think i think now you do play as the lamb i think okay that's but confirmed that... right. uh, <laughs> yeah yeah because i guess when you lose at the i mean oh spoilers you know ooh, no i wouldn't say that um but you know yeah so you've got the charismatic leader you know he's he actually doesn't say anything but that's deliberate all, i don't right. think in the whole game so he's not that, that charismatic but he's a bit of a cutie <laughs> so you know it's like it's, he, he, but like silence is bleach. power it's like yeah. the less you say the more like the more mm. charismatic you are because you're just sitting back and like just listen other oh, people know, have really to talk cool. yeah, yeah exactly people are waiting for you to say something just I th- anticipating <laughs> exactly <laughs> on the edge of your seat i think he does say um i can't do a sermon today because i've already done one i think that's <laughs> the only thing he says in the whole game uh, wow. that's enough to convert so who anyone. is he speaking to who is he I'm speaking just to? Speaking to to himself, I guess, I, or, or herself. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think. Or that's, is it like uh, a thought? It's like a thought. To it's a oh, thought. I it's a thought. Yeah. I think. Yeah. We have no voiceover for it. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Oh well, I didn't know that. I wish I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so we got we got the leader. You're a leader now. You, you got a leader, up and you want to start a cult. You, what do you do next? Like, what do you reckon? Um, who, Jim? You know, you go now. You tell us what do you do once once you, you got talk. a leader. <laughs> Well, you, <laughs> you you've got to um, you got to have your your doctrine and your set of rules for yeah. the cult. Yes. Um, you need a set of beliefs for these guys. So you need to set your beliefs. Um, rules. You, otherwise, what's your cult about? You know, what what are your beliefs? You need some kind of ideas to for your followers to follow and adhere to. Um, so that was something we really wanted to get into the game, and um, yeah, we took it took us quite a long time, and it came quite late in the process. Actually, it was figuring out the doctrines, but um, we really wanted to give. The player a kind of sense of choice over their cult and kind of let them have some kind of creative freedom and kind of choice system which would let them kind of dictate what kind of cult they would have so we introduced the uh yeah. these doctrine stones um and then when you collect three you get to like uh choose a new doctrine and that kind of gives you a choice between one option or the other uh, and that kind of um yeah lets you kind of decide what kind of cult it's going to be um so you know you might get a, a choice between being able to uh, resurrect a follower or murder a follower um, and th- those kind of things which Ooh. kind of you know you can only have one or the other so it also encourages you to replay the game and maybe do like an evil playthrough or a good playthrough um, so yeah, I think that's a kind of really important thing and just sort of laying the groundwork yeah. of what your what your cult is um, and it works really it's, it's well a as a system more, in the game it's a lot more work because we have I don't know how many I can't remember how many it is but you're only ever going to see half of the doctrines and the rituals and the abilities and stuff. So we, it's twice as much game in there than you'll ever see. Um, but that choice was, the reason we did that was the choice was so so important to like try, we wanted it to be like, are you good or bad? But really it's quite hard to do that because all the bad stuff is way more fun. So we just like put in quite a lot more bad stuff, but uh, yeah. I always play a good guy. <laughs> is it possible? Um, how, how good can you be in Cult of the Lamb? I try, all right, oh, let me dream. Right. What are the what are the good choices, Will? Like, what are the what would you choose? Like, what are the moments where you're like, okay, I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna do do this. I'm not gonna murder. Oh, the the things that allow you to not murder everyone, <laughs> like ascending <laughs> oh. followers. That's all right, right? So what good a boring is just life like you must live. 
<laughs> Man, I like to play things safe. I mean, they love I stay it. home. They love I read a book. <laughs> I love how being Feasting good is ritual. like not murdering people. That's considered good. It's <laughs> yeah. like just not yeah. being evil. Yeah, That's you're not actually line. good. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, it's, you know, it's a fine balance. But I think the way I always go is like, if your beliefs, if you say the afterlife is the best place to go, then if you sacrifice someone, they'll be happy to die. And they'll be happy to do anything for the, the cult. So as long as you've got that faith high, um, it's all about just like, you know, these promises. You, you gotta, you promise the world, but deliver nothing. That's one of the rules of the cult. You gotta, you know, it's all, it, you'll get it all at the end, but you're not gonna get it yet. And you gotta, you gotta do all these things and then you'll get it. Um, yeah. part of the, one of the things in, um, I've got it here, deception and recruiting. It's kind of like part of that as well, where you're kind of, you know, you're kind of telling some lies, telling them these things. Unfortunately, I don't think we got that much in the game where you kind of deceive people into joining. I think that we wanted to mm. originally, but it was just like, how do you turn that into a gameplay mechanic um, was quite difficult. I think the thought was like, even if you've got the faith meter and the faith is low, then maybe like, yeah, you could like lie to them there. But yeah. yeah it's a bit, or an indoctrination period. I think um, doing the sermons, yeah. right, is kind of your, you don't, you're kind of not in, explicitly don't know what, it, the sermons are about but they're kind of um raising the faith you, you're, you're you're spouting your your sermons to raise the faith of your followers which no matter what that is it always kind of works um so that's that's kind of the manipulation side yeah. of it i guess it's all about that um yeah this indoctrination phase but basically you're kind of brainwashing people because you don't want you know you got to change you know it takes two weeks to build a new habits so you gotta you gotta change up people's routines you gotta you gotta flip the switch i think um yeah, there's, there was a lot of things we looked at for the indoctrination phase, mm. like to turn that into fun, like gameplay, but there wasn't, it was probably the most difficult to kind of get going as well. Because there's other ideas as well of like, use, uh, I, one thing I wrote down, use of thought reform methods. Um, and we kind of got that in, which was good, um, through drugging your followers, um, sort of. So, <laughs> um, yeah, why not? Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of, it's, you know, I've got a few other things here. What do you reckon, Will and Harrison? What do you what are what are some things that you think you need in to start a cult? I mean, you obviously need followers, right? Like your mm-hmm. paddle, um, all the oh, people yeah. to do things for you. This is why we pay them the big bucks, you know. I feel, like why, that's, yeah, uh, <laughs> I feel like that's pretty important because then otherwise you're just sitting in like a church by yourself. <laughs> it's not a, not a cult. <laughs> to, to, to no yourself. one. Right? Because if, mm. if there's no one hanging around your cult, there's no one to order around. You can't do anything. You're just sort of like a dude. Exactly. A weird dude. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing. Pretty yeah. weird dude, yeah. A bit of yeah. a weird little guy with a crown on, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you need to find those followers. You want to, you know, you want someone that's vulnerable. You want those vulnerable people, and you mm. want to prey on that. You've um, either you've either just kicked yeah. their ass in a in a fight against the, the mini boss, and you just beat them <laughs> senseless, exactly. and so then you can take them, or you've just rescued them from from another danger, and and then you're vulnerable. You take them. They got no other choice. Yeah, you got know? no they choice. Got, they have yeah. they have to join you. So, At no point do we have like a mini game where you have to like negotiate with them or anything. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> you're coming with me. Um, That'd get old real fast because yeah. of how yeah. many people you indoctrinate. Oh my god, yeah, true. true. Could yeah, you find like one one run room you come across and the guy's like, hmm, I'm not sure, and you come there convince him. Let's have a friendly debate. Mm. <laughs> Monkey be, Island I mean, style. Griff, yeah, Griffland does that. Oh, yeah, that's, that yeah. whole political. Like We're not allowed to talk game. about other games in this. What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Well, we, do, oh. we do have rooms where you got to kind of make a choice, and the follower will make uh, join you whether you uh, if you give the right answer. Yeah. yeah. So we do. Yeah. yeah. Kind of get that. But it, he's kind of like, oh, I hate doing work in my cult. Does your cult do work? And you're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, nice, okay, man. sick. No. I'll join. <laughs> um, so I guess yeah, a bit of lied. You know, I like it. I like it. Uh, um, what else you got, Harrison? You got any thoughts on maybe some um, some ways to indoctrinate people, how to make them more loyal, or um, I don't know, anything like that? Uh, I feel like you got to clean up their shit. Um, mm. A lot of people they like that. It seems yep, to be yep, what yep. you do most of the time. Yep. Cult of the lamb. Let's just clean up poo. Very important. Very mm. important. You don't. You, who would? How would you know who your cult leader is if he's not cleaning up your poo poo? <laughs> yeah. um, exactly. Yeah, um, it's just yeah. Part of the with that um do you, you guys like have, have you guys seen that there's been a lot of feedback on why is like the outhouse is in like digging a hole so people can poop in a hole why is that like so far into the 
upgrade mm. tree have you seen there's a lot of like people yeah. being like i've seen a lot of angry people <laughs> yeah like quite god i just put a hole it's in they jay's fault jay that is me i remember the moment i remember the moment of making that decision poop is really funny right like, yeah exactly <laughs> funny. oh and also um harrison were you responsible for like one of the most iconic follower quests in the whole of Cult of the Lamb. You know what I'm talking about? The one where they come yeah, up. No, that was your idea. That was your <laughs> idea. No, I can't take credit for that. Yeah, the one where you really? make them eat poop. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. I thought that yeah, was you. That was, that was that was your disgusting brain. <laughs> Harrison, this is where you stop and you go, yes, that was my idea. I'm <laughs> no, no. Just, I don't I'll know what happened People think I'm weird. No, I, don't, don't, <laughs> I don't even remember it. That's how, how like small it was that when we implemented it. And, and it just seems to be people that, people find it weird to eat poop. I don't get it. You know, it's totally oh my weird. God. Yeah. What's weird you can't knock it till you've tried it, really. It's just one of those things. <laughs> I swear, I swear when you like told me about it, I was like, all right, add it in, but just add a really low chance of it. But I swear every single person that's yeah, played it yeah. is like, got yeah. it. I'm just like, yeah. Actually, I it's think the most it's... common. Harrison, oh, I is it? Blame uh, Harrison changed it up. <laughs> oh, it's the most common. Yeah, like, is it really? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because like there's so many um, specific things of other Terrible quests, ones. whereas yeah. there's always uh, poo in the base. So it's like, hey, uh, make me eat poop. You know? Right, right, right. Anyway, oh, funny. actually, actually, it's like I think it's prioritized pretty early on in the game. Like we um, gotta <laughs> unlock the poop mill, so like we give it to him. Oh, that's pretty quick. It's yeah, all yeah. about making sure the streamers see it really early. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, it's I think as well though, it's part of being um, a cult leader because it's like you kind of mm. have to demand this um, absolute and unquestioning loyalty. So it's like, yeah. you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta make someone eat poop every now and then because you're, <laughs> you're the boss and you gotta tell them what to do. Hey, they, yeah. they ask you for it though. Yeah. Except they ask you. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, well, you know, each, each, well, they're just you know, proving each. themselves. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's loyalty. They want to impress you. So they, I will you know, eat this shit sandwich for you. <laughs> I do it for you. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's, you know, we're pretty smart. You know, that's. Smart game developers over here. I think it came ah. from, um, do, do, I, I think it might, might have come from you because I think we were like, what are the things that people don't do in the base? And we're like, they don't make the poop meal. So let's put in a quest to make, they don't uh, make the ground. Yeah, and, and I think it came from that. We were doing like a sweep of like, let's make sure people do the things that they can do, but have no real reason to do it. And so I think yeah. that was part of that. It still that doesn't have a reason, pass. I don't think. Yeah, I think there's- um, a reason. This, this, that quest system was like an amazing way to kind of encourage pe uh, players to do all these different things, like not not only stuff yeah. that they wouldn't usually do, but also just um, leading the player in um, the kind of onboarding tutorial section where it's like, do you have like another pop-up screen where you have some text to read or do you have like a little follower come and ask you for to do a specific thing, uh, which yeah. became a really powerful tool in, yeah. in kind of making it like an, a feel natural in sort of guiding the player. So I thought yeah. it yeah. worked really well. You're not like, oh, another fetch quest. It's like, oh, no, I'm doing this thing for that guy. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. You've got more emotional attachment. And I think you particularly when they're party. kind of introducing new systems that you, the player hasn't seen before, it's like something new. So it's like, it's always really kind of interesting. And um, yeah, I think that's a brilliant, exactly. brilliant way of doing it. Well done, nice. And there's three, three types as well. There's like the, um, mm. the on, well, maybe Harrison, you want to talk about there's three types of the follower quests. Yeah, there's the onboarding, there's the, just the generic quests, and then there's like the actual stories. So the onboarding are things that we need the player to do. So make poop. Um, but it's more like, um, oh, you know, you haven't fed a follower for a while. You need to give them some food. Um, then there's just the generic quests, which is just anything. Go find me 10 flowers. And then there's the stories where like um, you do a quest and they kind of progress as you go. So you do, most of them have about four quests in them. So it might be like, oh, my brother's in Darkwood, go get them. And then it's like, oh, my brother's annoying me, go sacrifice them. Oh, no, I missed them. Bring them back. Like that kind of thing. That's not one, but maybe we'll write that down for a future one. Um, <laughs> but that, that kind of idea. So they kind of lead on to each other. Um, you know, a lot of people have probably experienced those stories, but because a lot of the cult shifts throughout as you play, you might end up killing someone and then that story kind of ends because, you know, it's mm. gone now. So there's a lot of broken stories, but it's really good when someone gets through like the whole storyline because yeah. sort of the stars have to align for that to kind of happen. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. But also, what's that have to do with cult? Come on, guys. Stay on topic. You know, there's a panel about how you, people want to know how to start a cult. You mm. just, you're derailing it with your game design and your um, <laughs> programming. Sorry. That's you true. Yeah. Uh, apologies. <laughs> so, you know, I think another element that's quite important with um with cults, the son of cults, is you need you need 
you need some purpose. Like what it's it's us versus them. You need to have this distinction. Like you you are the holy great. You are the best and everyone else is against you. And you gotta think of why. And kind of we this was another thing we tried to get in the game. It's kind of but like it was it's quite difficult to kind of push those concepts. Um, I think we kind of got, you know, with all the enemies and everything in the game, basically everything in the dungeon is there to, like, murder you. Um, and that's kind of the them, except for all those little guys that aren't the them. <laughs> so I guess that's, the, you know, a bit different. But um, yeah. whole structure yeah. of the game is us and them. That's the whole structure, isn't it? It's like us is yeah, the base and base, them is the dungeon. Yeah, base and them. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, I, I think that just even that, that messaging, though, so I think... Um, I think we wanted to go in originally but in like the rituals and um stuff like having some or sermons kind of talking about like oh you know those guys are so bad and maybe you get a buff on combat i think we like talking about mm. that ages ago but we oh, yeah. got it in but just kind of trying to bring in that subtly with with those ideas um yeah i gotta this is basically what i'm reading up now is i made a document called um what is a cult <laughs> So what we did was we tried to figure out what actually is a cult so that we could kind of convert that all into gameplay and make sure we're actually ticking the the box of like player fantasy of starting a cult. Um, so, you know, it's the it's the, the Bible on starting a cult, you know, it's got everything in it. I mean, it's got like six paragraphs. Yeah. <laughs> could you walk, could you walk uh, us through like what what are the maybe yeah, we could well, do each paragraph and then we'll talk about it and then do the next one yeah then, well yeah. i've been going through i've been going through it we missed one which was um isolation oh. i think that's used a lot by cult leaders to kind of um you know they like go do that you isolate them from their friends and family um but in cult of lamb again it's quite difficult how do you how do you do that how do you got, do that because you, i guess yeah we've got the prison them all in yeah. jail mm. 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 prison yeah prison well there you go that's i because originally actually when we first started the game we had um you could basically build multiple cults like around the world um and i mean it got very complicated but it kind of meant that you could you'd put one guy just in a cult by himself my um chopping down trees or something like that um and yeah it was quite quite a cool concept but it was you're like oh my god yeah now i'm managing two cults yeah, yeah, I think it got yeah, a bit, it made it a bit fragmented, and it kind of I think you really wanted to focus in on your cult and your your um, different followers, and we wanted to like build up the relationship you had with each individual followers. As soon as there was like another one to worry about, and you had to sort of jump mm. between the two, it, it just got like a bit unwieldy and uh, really hard to kind of segment in your yeah. brain mentally, like where you should fo be focusing your time and stuff. Um, but you know, who knows? Yeah. In the future, maybe maybe we'll add yeah, outposts. Maybe. Maybe. It's still set up, I'm pretty sure. You know, that's still there somewhere. In general, I think <laughs> I think every time we we reduced the scope or like made things more focused and less complicated, the game got better. Um, mm. And I think that was a really good example where like yeah, you had different. We had like this overworld hub where you could just walk anywhere, sort of thing, and build a base anywhere. And it sounds sounds cool. really cool. Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> that but sounds it's just... cool. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's it wasn't like the game I played. <laughs> yeah, but because we had this like it's not like a new structure or anything. It was like two familiar things, but we're sort of mushing them together in a, in a new way. It's like, there was so much That's new stuff much. to explain. Yeah. And so, and again, it, it was similar with the dungeons where it was just like, you just went and went and went, went. Cause that's what you do in a roguelike is you just go and go and go. And so it was when we put those like hard exits, like, okay, now you've been mini boss. Now you have to go home. Uh, it took the sort of stress away and suddenly like everything started to like flow much better and stuff. So yeah. I think that was a great example of like, yeah, when we focus things down, um, and made things less complicated, the game got bigger and better. All, yeah. all of the yeah. development, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's cutting back our idea. ideas. Oh, no, that sucks. Yeah, let's yeah. <laughs> just cut it. Yeah. Yeah, so there was that one. Um, we had uh, uh, Inside Language that only members fully understand. So, again, this one was quite tricky. Uh, I think how. I initially envisioned it was basically kind of having the followers and kind of having them kind of when you go in the temple they they all lose their kind of identity because they've got the hoods on they just have the eyes and they kind of become one so it's kind of like it's kind of a you know and they've got all their outfits so it's kind of that um they've got their own little secret thing going on mm -hmm. you know um, that's yeah. how i see it but again it was a bit hard to do that we work in the motifs and the like, icons and stuff like that of the game a bit to kind of uh, yeah. further it. i think it was hard with the kind of loss of identity because we wanted to have that like 
each a lot follow- of identity. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, want, we kind of really want that each follower to have a lot of identity and let you kind of choose their yeah. colors and choose their variants and their animal styles and for it to feel like you know this bustling village of like different animals. So the kind of idea of um, enter as soon as you enter the cult, you lose your identity and you're one with the cult. It was kind of at odds with that idea, but I think yeah, yeah, like when you go into the temple and having them pull up their hoods and then suddenly they, you, they do lose that. So we did manage to sort of work that in. Um, I think yeah. for the language, like the, really the, the the kind of symbols, and the, there was a point where we had this whole like alphabet of um, yeah, like alphabet for for different for the different biomes and stuff. But it kind of oh, yeah. got lost sort of somewhere along the way. But we do have this kind of list of symbols that are kind of used throughout the game, which don't necessarily mean anything, but I think they kind of make make the world feel like it ha- it's full of its own languages and. Um, Sort of script. You're not meant scriptures. to say that. You're not meant, yeah. you're not meant <laughs> to say that. Oh, there's, or do they, they still have, have meaning? <laughs> there's so many secrets wow. that people haven't discovered. They just yeah, need to. Uh, they haven't haven't uh, figured out. Crack, they haven't cracked the code know. yet. Wait, we mm. haven't cracked them ourselves. Yeah, let us uh, know when you figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely think uh, that um, the idea of like symbolism and iconography is like something that's used in religion and in cults to kind of um, build up the mythology and sort of make, make a powerful presence and imagery uh, yeah. around that, that yeah. branding baby yeah i think that kind of thing is reflected really well in like the way a, a player can decorate their cult as well mm. like we give them all of these options and all these really cool looking things and they can really sort of create that iconogra- iconography of their own cult as well while they're playing yeah that's mm. yeah that's a good point with the even with the, the followers they make and the names they give them they mm. are kind of creating their own and with this kind of inside you know themes connecting them yeah yeah and it's it's also just good for a player in general because it makes it feel like you know oh this is definitely my cult now mm. you know everyone yeah. is different and unique it was i think that was a big problem we had as well where we wanted yeah for people to feel like there was that were making their own cult and they had customization over it i think like yeah a few of the early things like just even adding allowing the players to name the cult even yeah. though it's not really referenced much um just kind of helped with that and kind of um yeah allowing you to change all the followers uh, and decorate i think most of it's done through decorating the base to be honest but yeah we hope you know we'll get in some new ones get in some new features eventually yeah cult name yeah. is great though because you get so many people who are like oh what did you yeah, name your cult, cult what did you yeah. name your cult what stupid name did you give it? <laughs> yeah. Actually, cult, naming cults is hard. Yeah. What are the, some of the best cult names that you guys have seen? One of Ooh. my favorites, which I think was Julian's, was um, was it Big <laughs> Big Booty Club? Was like yeah, your Big cult Booty name? Club. I like. I was oh, like yeah. trying to debug something. I loaded up your save, and it just goes Boom. <laughs> Big Booty Club. I was like, yeah, awesome. they got uh, big booty. What um, else could get dangerous? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorites was one on Twitter that, and then someone just called it Hillsong. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, it, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, mm. I'm trying to think. I did see some funny ones, so I can't I can't remember right now. Jay, Jay did one that was like your cult, cult. You know, like mm-hmm. cult, a little drink. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. kind of fun because you got to drink Kool Aid. I don't know. I thought, like, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's cool. clever. Yeah, yeah, cult, cult. Yeah. So yeah, cult name. It's all branding as well. Make sure you name your cult something good, like in real life when you start a cult, because you know, you know, Scientology. Mm, Boring. Mm, yeah, I don't mm. know. I don't know about. It. I mean, it's got good branding, but um, you got science in there. Yeah. Kind of makes science it more yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. science is in the name it must be yeah, true. yeah actually you know what i take it back yeah that's a pretty good one <laughs> um so yeah come up good one um what else we got uh strict control over members daily routine i think this is actually oh. a big one we tried to get in originally um so you would have you'd be able to control you'd actually have a schedule of everyone's um activities for the day and you could like help You'd be like, all right, in the morning, you guys go to church. Afterwards, you can have some lunch and then go to work or something. So you could control all that. Um, but it was, yeah, it just did not work. I can't remember why. So. Uh, I think, again, it was too complicated, maybe. It was really yeah. good when it first went in because you felt like when you came came back and they were like in church, you're like, where is everyone? Oh, yeah, they're in, in church. And then they come out and stuff. It, it was good, but it, it was just, it was another it thing. Yeah. To- it wasn't reactive as well, I think. Like if you're yeah. back at your base and you're like, oh, this I need to build this thing, and then you're oh like, yeah, oh, well no, I need to change the schedule or tell people what to do. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. So, and then it was it's, like because you got like a because you're not like mouse and keyboard, you well you you are, but you know what I mean. But you or you got a gamepad, it's hard to like go into something, and go like okay, down left left left, okay food down left left. You know it's like really yeah. clunky. It's really clunky. 
so just like streamlining it was so much better yeah it's like yo build that thing yeah, yeah i was just about to say it sounds like it'd be a really big user interface challenge it's particularly because yeah. if you've got to do it like a lot and for every single new follower that you get like it's just a lot and could be really overwhelming it, to- it totally was that's exactly what happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we've done it all we've done it all here yeah um, that's the yeah, thing but- we do it for you guys so we can tell you how to start a cult. So. Tell you how not to design a game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was playing um, an early build of the game the other day where you had to oh. literally manually carry each resource from your temple <laughs> to the building site back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Oh my did, God. Oh my God. God. Yeah. We originally, yeah. Idea. We didn't want any UI. So it was like, yeah. yeah, everything was like practical and physical and you had to like do it all without interfaces. Um, Do you guys remember the word we kept saying? Tangible. Tangible, tangible. that's tangible. tangible. And then like we you. brought um, Will to redo all our UI. Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say, <laughs> I'm glad because then I wouldn't have had a job. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah. that one. you clear a room and then chop down all the trees because each of the rooms had trees and stones. So you kill all the enemies, then you chop down the trees. So then you, and then there was like owl flew down to the middle of the room and then you'd pick up the stone, the walk owl. all the way back, put it in the owl and then go back, pick <laughs> oh up the log God. all the way, and you do it for like 10 different things. Um, we didn't talk yeah. about the owl. It's like a bad game. <laughs> it was oddly, I honestly, I didn't mind it. It was like a little bit satisfying just doing yeah. that like busy work where you're like, oh, I just go pick up. You know, you can see the you know the progress, but um, yeah, it just did not make sense. Didn't didn't fit this game because it was no. quite because the game's quite actiony. You got to make all that stuff more arcade arcadey. But if you were more like Stardewy, you know, then you could yeah. you could do that sort of like busy work stuff because that's kind of what you want. But because we're like go kill all these people and explosions, <laughs> poof, poof, yeah. and then and now like that... spend twenty minutes picking things up. Yeah, yeah. We mm. got there well, in the well, end. Uh, we did it. We did it, boys. We did. We did. Like watching this. Um, so what else we got? Uh, oh, we've already... Um, Harrison, someone's already said this one. Their beliefs are your religion for your followers. So, yeah, this, you know, we kind of already talked about it, but, you know, what do they believe in? What are the values, etc.? We kind of didn't get in value. We kind of got values in a little bit, but, again, I think we could explore it more in the future. Uh, but then you've got classic things as well, like the worship and ritual. So that was like two of the big things that we knew we needed to get in. We needed mm-hmm. to get in worshiping and we needed to get in rituals um, and uh, like sermons as well. So like they were just like some really basic, real basic cult things. You got, you know, your daily rituals, your um, just ha- things you'll do every day, things you'll do every day, things you'll do every couple of days. Um, it took a long uh, time to kind of um, encourage players to get the sermons right. Mm. I think because they changed a lot, mm. they went through a lot of iteration. Um, I, I don't know if you if you want to talk about that, Jay, because I, I know that was kind of your baby. But like how <laughs> sermons changed and how we kind of got them to where they ended up in the end. Because um, I know originally, like you were given the kind of choice between the message you wanted to say, and then it was you just used to raise the oh, faith yeah. originally, like, and then we kind of slowly changed okay. it and. It, yeah the doct the doctrines were where the sermons so you do a sermon and then you would you know when it, it pop you get the three doctrine stones that it pops up it's like what category do you want it used to be what that was originally what sermon do you want to preach so like what do you want to preach and then the, it each had a bar and that would fill up and then you would get your doctrine your, your choices um and that was that was the sermon and then we didn't have a doctrine thing because it was all tied up in there and then the rituals. But it, I think the, one of the trickiest thing about this game was like, you know, we, we got this player fantasy of like, you've got to have this kind of belief structure and it needs to be important to the game. Um, but like, it's very hard. Like if you're making a Metroidvania, it's like, okay, I know exactly what I'm making. I'm, I, you know, I've got the structure. Okay. There's, there's the high ledge. You don't have a double jump yet. So go over here, get double, you know, and you know the structure, but we didn't really, I think the biggest challenge of this game was figuring out the structure. Like, what the hell is this game? Yeah. yeah, we knew we had these two sides. Um, yeah, even base building games, like, we could only steal so much, unfortunately. Um, yeah, definitely try to steal more, but um, <laughs> we couldn't. We couldn't. Because you have um, a gamepad, so it's like, yeah. you can't even, you know, you, we... Yeah, we originally had, like, Don't Starve, like, you'd make it and then you'd stand, walk around to place it, but then we went to the signpost and that seemed to be a lot easier. But, yeah, yeah, so it was, uh, it was a lot of work trying to figure out, and I think... The problem, the biggest problem we had with the game um, was we couldn't get the followers to be important for the dungeon. So it's like you couldn't, we couldn't like, um, 
make it like at one point very close to release you could just ignore your followers make it all die and you could just complete all the dungeons and it didn't matter and so it was only quite quite late that we realized like oh what if we put the sermons as a way to upgrade the player and then that up player upgrade thing came in like really late like probably like <laughs> probably only a matter of a few a few months ago yeah, yeah yeah and so once we got the 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 sermons to upgrade the player, then it meant it was important how many followers you had because that then made the sermons more powerful and stuff. And once we got that, I think that was the lot, the final thing that like completed. Yeah. I think completed we were game. we were avoiding it for ages. I think because we originally didn't want to make the player stronger because then yeah. it kind of the replayability gets killed a little bit. Um, yeah. If you go back to an earlier dungeon, it's too easy now. So we try to avoid it, and then we're just like, you know what? Let's just bloody do it. And then it <laughs> so, turned out. So, yeah, so works well. But yeah. it kind of takes me into, yeah, the next cult activity, you know? So you've started a cult. You've done it. You've got your crew. You believe in um, have it, having a beer. Having a beer by Cooper's, Cooper's Pale Ale, sponsored <laughs> by... Um, you know, that's your belief. You enjoy having a Cooper's Pale Ale yeah. with the your Cooper friends. cult. That's... That's the mm -hmm. Cooper cult. So that's what you want to do. So, but you've got them. But now, how, you got to exploit your followers. You know, it's not a cult without a little bit of a little bit of cheeky exploitation. Um, so, you know, how do we do it? How do we do it? Um, does anyone want to? What do we think fast? Does anyone anyone have any ideas? Get them to do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, that's gold star. That's, um, that's great. Yeah, you got to get them to work. They gotta work, baby. Mm. Um, they can make a ship. That's one one example. Uh, know. Loyalty, like uh, miss uh, loyalty. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then turn it. We turn them into like a crop. So you like water them every day by increasing that. But you're increasing their loyalty, and then they'll and then you can harvest them. They'll give you. Yes, you get uh, devotion out of them, which is yeah. a little resource we have. But um, yeah, yeah, let's level up. Um, and I think that's a system we use quite a bit for a few of them, like um, sacrificing as well. I think you get the same juice. Is that right? Um, yep. And then follower juice. The juice. The follower juice. What do I, what do I exploitation? What do I? Yes. Let me. Yeah. So you've got the like the roles for everyone. They do the work. You've got some follower commands. So that was important. Being able to tell people to like do things whenever you want. Um, and they don't really have a choice. I think if they're a dissenter, then maybe they don't listen to going, or they don't come into the temple. They're, they'll ignore a few things. And old people, you know, they're too old. They can't, you can't tell them to work no more. They're, they're putting in their time. Um, when it's time to harvest their meat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. But then you kind of, yeah, through the roles as well, you kind of have um, things like the Sherpas, the Sherpa? Is that what we called it? Or was it? No, the um, missionary. missionary. The missionary. Yeah, the missionaries. Um, they'll go out on these missions for you and the kind of higher level they are, the more shit you can get. So it's all about kind of like, you want to look after your dudes, as Jay was saying, you want to water them so that you can kind of cash in that um, cash money later. Yeah, yeah that's I, what it's all about. I think we always wanted the kind of long-term goal of, um, you know, you start, you start out and having to do all these busy tasks yourself. And then as you get more followers and they sort of pray and you un get more divine inspiration to unlock more buildings, you can then kind of get your followers to automate those busy jobs and do them for you. So eventually, like, you don't have to clean up all the poop and you don't have to, um, you know, empty all the outhouses and water all the crops in your in your farms and stuff. So eventually the followers will do that for you. But it's kind of, um, if there's a satisfaction in that journey of getting getting your cult to that place where it's, it's all your followers are kind of doing that stuff for you. Um, so yeah, that's it, like, weird... it goes in hand with the, the idea of sort of getting the, having control over the followers and giving them commands. Exploiting them. I like, um, I feel like a great example we got in of that as well as um, when you die, being able to like sacrifice someone and be like, yeah. yep, yeah, I kill you. I'm sorry about it, but I think you're ugly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Drink that follower juice and get resurrected. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was in there for ages. I really, I like, I think it was really good. It was really overpowered, but I loved it when uh, we changed it. So like, each follower, depending on their follower level, gives you a certain amount of hearts when you resurrect. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whose idea it was to make the, the, your spouse give you like loads of hearts, but ah, really, yeah. really encourage you to sacrifice your joking. your spouse, um, which was a horrible thing to do. But it's um, it works really well. It's very uh, very. I do remember that you. conversation. 
I, I think yeah. I remember that we were worried it was too much. And then I think Julian's like, no, it has to be this much because it will mm. make people do. Because like so much of the game, we're trying to make you do horrible things. Uh, we don't force you to, but we like really incentivize you to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, wouldn't it be nice? You know, wouldn't it? Here's a little, can we tempt you? You know, that's what yeah. it's all about. Trying to get to. people. Yeah. It's like questioning that morality. So if you do want to be a good cult leader, you're kind of like the lamb, you know, you're a good, you might be a good person at heart, but then, you know, you might get able when you start like swinging that sword around, you get pretty, pretty cranky. So you know, it's yeah. all about testing that, I think. It's great. It's, uh, I'm so glad that we managed to get that. Cause it's like, there's the story of the game, which is like, just to kind of push you through the dungeon. But then there's the story of your cult, which is like kind of emergent stuff. Um, like, you know, this follower makes you eat poop. So you sacrifice them and you know, all that stuff. And then there's also the story of the players journey themselves. Like, cause the player probably goes in being like, I want to have a nice cult, like, like Will does. Um, <laughs> but then you probably end up like me where you just like start feeding the dead followers to the other followers and stuff. But, and, and you kind of look back and like, how did I become this monster? And it's, it's like, <laughs> that sort of, the, we just give you the tools and then you, so it's like yeah. sort of three layers to it. I think that was always the goal, but it didn't really come together until quite late, I feel. Yeah, um, when it tried, did. Mm. Yeah, because <laughs> we had, you try to do like, it was like a whole RimWorld thing originally. I yeah, I was always pushing for the RimWorld stuff. Um, that was, <laughs> but then. Next game. We'll still at next, next game. game. Yeah, yeah, next game. Um, but again, like that, that game, like it's part, so much of our game was dictated by the fact that you're usually playing with a gamepad so like we couldn't get too deep into things but we could get deep enough and that was always kind of a something we had to work within that restriction yeah mm. very true mm. nice all right cool well you know what else? i feel like people i feel like we've given the good tips to start a cult now is there anything else anyone can think of to 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 the siege the siege is that what i don't know to tell these people how are they going to start this cult Nothing. Oh. I feel like we've uh, <laughs> we've covered we've covered all the basics. We've you covered know? it all. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I'm going through my duck. I got I got nothing. I think really <laughs> the only other yeah. the only other thing is just like you got to add that secret sauce. You know, you got to add that one thing to sort of make your cult special and make it stand out from all the others. You know, you might yeah. you might have the leader, you might have the indoctrination and all the all the, the doctrines and stuff, but you got to have that little something to kind of draw them yeah. in. Um, yeah. And for for cult of the lamb, I think it's kind of. It's the art style and the juxtaposition and the cuteness juxtaposed with the the evilness, um, which work really well and seems to resonate with people. But you know, you can't copy our ideas. You you gotta do your own. You gotta no, find your own secret sauce. No, let them. Let them. <laughs> Make no. your own damn game. For goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, please play our game. Um, yeah. Did you? So just to just to speak to that because I know we're running out of time. But um, did. Uh, with the whole um because that's something i i find people really interested in the, the the cute versus the dark thing like how did you guys manage that and come up with that and did you find that there was like uh advantages or disadvantages to it and and the art style in general yeah i feel like we kind of like fell into it a little bit because we were trying to make it all dark but then we kind of drew all these cute little characters um so yeah. i feel like it wasn't super intentional at the start um but yeah, I mean, it worked out great. It meant that we could like keep all the dungeon stuff really spooky, but then all the base stuff can be kind of cute. And then all the like location stuff can be a bit more random, um, which I mm. kind of like doing. So yeah, it was, yeah, I, it was nice keeping them kind of a bit separate. So it's not like you know, random. Yeah, it, like, I, I think it thing. just gave us creative freedom to um, do lots of really nasty stuff, but not actually come across too <laughs> nasty. And uh, just because it's in that lens of, cute cartoony so it's kind of no matter how brutal you get even if you're sort of chopping up your husband and feeding it to your mistress <laughs> um, it's fun it's kind of okay it's kind of okay i, th I think it's cute I think, I think it's okay um, but yeah like our games are just always cute and that comes out naturally and we we, we wanted to add a darker layer in um to kind of appeal to that slightly more mature audience you know the binding of isaac the the hollow knight the the Th those, that kind the of audience. Steam audience they like yeah they like some <laughs> fucked up stuff so yeah. But, uh, yeah give them what they want you know they yeah. don't want no adventure pals they don't know what they don't want a giraffe <laughs> no. in the backpack they want, some, they want a little silly. ritual 
Yeah, uh, or Next more poop. Level. They want ritualistic. Yeah, <laughs> they like they like that poop. They want to eat the poop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Well, well, well. If there is there anything else we want to any other last words of wisdom or anything else we want to talk about before we we let people go start their cult. Uh, if you oh, haven't yeah, played, game. if you haven't, yeah, that's exactly oh, yeah. what I was going to say. If you haven't played Cult of the Lamb, the please, game. please check it out. Please uh, go and, and and play it, um, and let us know if you like it or not, and shoot us a some shoot us a message. Don't tell us if you don't like it. Yeah, don't tell no, us if you don't. Like it. <laughs> don't want to know. Just yeah, no, but um, yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thanks everyone. Um, I'm gonna do a little wait. I I wish I oh, we need some outro music. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>